So hello and welcome to this demonstration uh, in the course for Secure Systems Engineering. So in this demo we will be showing how uh, a stack can be manipulated to actually skip an instruction. So uh, this demo uh, and the source code is actually present in a virtual box which you can actually download. So uh, you should have done it with the previous demos and uh, in the week 0 and week 1. So uh, let us actually start off this demo. So uh, the demo is present in um, this particular directory nptel codes module 1 and uh, it corresponds to this uh, C code skip instruction. So let us open this particular C code, we will open it over here and uh, what we see is two functions. One is a function which takes three parameters A, B and C and it does uh, some simple manipulations on a buffer. Next what you also see is the main function where you have a local variable x which has a value 0, then there is an invocation to function uh, with parameters 1, 2 and 3 and then there is a statement for x equal to 1 and then there is a printf uh, value of x is percentage %d. One thing you would actually like to do at this time is to guess what the output of this particular program is. So let us actually look at it. Uh, so one would guess that since x is equal to 1 over here, uh, what would likely be printed on the screen is that the value of x is, is 1. But let us see what actually happens. As before, we run a make clean and then a make. and uh, uh, we get the executable called skip instruction. Now when we run this particular program, what we see is that we obtain a value of x is 0. Uh, in fact, this entire thing of x equal to 1 has not been executed at all. Rather, what has happened to x is that it has somehow managed to obtain the value of 0 which corresponds to this particular statement. So this is of course quite counterintuitive and uh, not what is expected. And in order to understand what actually is happening, uh, we would have to go into this particular function. So the way we will understand this function is uh, through GDB. So let us run GDB for this. So we would run GDB dot slash skip instruction and uh, as we have seen before, we can list the various contents of uh, the uh, program and we could also set a breakpoint over here uh, say at line number 14. So line number 14 corresponds to the call uh, to this particular function. Now when we run it as we have seen uh, in the previous video, the program will execute starting from main and stop due to the breakpoint in line number 14. So we see that the breakpoint has been hit and uh, the execution has stopped just before the function has been invoked. Uh, now we could actually look at the value of x and rightly enough the value of x will be 0. So we could do something like info locals and uh, this has a value of x equal to 0. This is because x has been initialized in line number 13 to be 0. Now let us single step through uh, this pro program and see what is actually happening in function. So first of all, uh, before we invoke the next line, let us print what are the contents of the various important regis registers. So as we seen before, uh, the contents of the instruction pointer is 8048449 which is essentially the location where call to function is present. We have the stack pointer and the base pointer which is pointing to the frame corresponding to the main function. Now if I do a single instruction and execute a single instruction corresponding to this, uh, we could see what happens. At this particular point, we are pushing the various uh, arguments on the stack and uh, this we have seen before so we do not have to spend too much time over here. And Eventually, uh, we would see that 
the function gets invoked uh, due to this line and uh, the execution has been transferred to the function. So, let us disassemble the function. And at this point, we would also uh, look at the various registers that is the uh, EIP, ESP and the EBP. So, what we see here is that we have a stack pointer which is at FFFF CF20. Okay? and the base pointer is at FFFF CF48. Now, since this is still at the first line of function, the uh, base pointer has not been changed as yet and the new frame corresponding to this function has not been created as yet. So, let us uh, single step through a few more instructions. Uh, let us say we single step through four instructions. Um, and look at the contents of the stack. So, the contents of the stack as we have seen previously uh, can be obtained as follows x x um, x 32 x dollar ESP. So, one thing to note that the return address which should be pushed onto the stack to the call function in main is this. So, soon after the call gets in invoked, the next instruction has the address 08048454. Now, if we actually look at uh, the contents of the stack, we see that the return address what we have just mentioned is at this location. This has the uh, address FFFF cf 1 c plus 4 that is f f f f c f 2 0. So, in this uh, particular function we have two locals we have a pointer to an integer which is known as uh, r e t and uh, a buffer which is of 16 characters. So, as we have seen in the previous video uh, we could print the address of uh, these two local variables and what as we would expect uh, these two local variables would be present in the newly formed stack frame for this function. So, uh, printing the contents of register can be done as follows p slash x ampersand rect which is ffff cf18. So, uh, this would uh, be the contents of rect and the contents of buffer is as follows ffff cf08. Now, what you see is that the contents of uh, the buffer starts at ffff cf08 and extends for 16 bytes. Uh, so, anything beyond this 16 bytes would lead to a buffer overflow. Now, what we do want over here is that we want to overflow the buffer in such a way so that the return address is modified. Now, uh, we would take our calculator, we can do this as follows. Um, uh, set it to the hexadecimal mode and uh, we would see what is the distance from the buffer to where the return address is stored. So, uh, we know that the return address is present at the location ffff cf20 and the buffer is uh, present at this location ffff cf08. So, we subtract this ffff cf08. So, we see that there is an offset of 18 bytes and this 18 is in hexadecimal which corresponds to 24 bytes offset from the start of the buffer to the return address. Now, what we do in this particular line over here 
is that uh, at this location buffer plus 24 uh, we obtain um, a pointer and this particular pointer is stored in uh, this local variable return. So essentially at this particular point what we obtain is that return points to the to where the return address is stored. So we can see this happening by single stepping and uh, looking at the contents of uh, ret. So ret is present at fffff cf18 cf18. So we see that ret has a value of zero right now. We will uh, execute a single instruction in which case we have actually executed this particular uh, instruction and change the value of ret so that it points to the where the return address is present. So let us now print the contents of the return. So uh, x slash x would uh, dump the memory corresponding to this location fffff cf18 and as we have seen before this particular memory location corresponds to where ret is stored. Now what we see over here is ret has a value fffff cf20 and uh, this corresponds to this location and uh, this actually is where the return address is stored. Now the next line is very crucial. The next line of function increments the value of ret by 8 bytes. Now to understand what this means we would first single step execute a single instruction and see that the contents of that return address has been modified uh, and incremented by 8 bytes. Um, so, so not yet let me single instruction ok. So we had to uh, specify uh, 4 instructions to be executed because uh, this single statement in C corresponds to 4 instructions in the assembly code. So at this point we see that this uh, line of C has completed executing and we would also look at the stack and note that the return address has been modified. So the return address used to be 080 Four five four, and what it has changed to is zero eight zero four eight four five C. To understand what is the implication of this change, we look at the disassembly of main. Okay, the actual return address is zero eight zero four eight four five four, and what we have actually changed this to is zero eight. 04845C and essentially what it is doing is that it is actually skipping this add instruction and uh, landing somewhere here. So essentially what would happen when this function completes execution is that this value 080 4845C gets taken from the stack and place into the instruction pointer and execution of the program will continue based on this particular value. So uh, let us single step th through this and uh, see that uh, it has come back to main and we would note that uh, the contents of the instruction pointer is 080-4845C which essentially means that the add instruction which is specified here has been skipped. As a result what is happening with respect to the C code is that after the function is invoked the x equal to 1 statement is getting skipped and we are directly going to the printf statement and since this x equal to 1 statement is not being executed, the value of x continues to be 
0. And as a result, when we actually continue the execution of uh, this program using the C command which stands for continue to execute, uh, then we get that the value of x is 0. So, in this uh, particular video, we have seen one example of how we could manipulate uh, execution of a program in such a way so that uh, an instruction can be skipped. In the next demonstration, what we will see is how we could do something which is more dangerous. We would see how we could actually inject code into a program and force a payload uh, to be executed. In the demo that we will look at next, we will take a shell code and we will inject the shell code into a dummy program and then force this shell code to execute. Thank you.